Hello, everyone. And welcome to our penultimate talk of the day. And here we have Dr. Sander Martinic Ipsic, who currently works as an associate professor of computer science at the University of Rijeka, Department of Informatics. And her research interests include, consist of research into natural language processing, for, to synthesis, corporate development, with a particular focus on the creation language. Now, her talk here will focus on a, t a task of keyword extraction and how to aut automatically identify a set of terms that des best describe the document. So I really do hope you enjoy. And as always, if you have any questions, please do ask through our link, dsc.network forward slash QA forward slash Tesla. Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my talk is going to be a little bit different. I'm coming from academia and I'm going to present some research that we ha have done in developing our method. The second thing that we are going to be different is uh, that we are dealing with texts which are not always in interest in business. So uh, I hope that maybe this can be useful to some of you. So I'm coming from University of Rijeka, and I'm going to talk about keyword extraction. First of all, what is keyword extraction? Uh, keywords are considered to be the most informative parts of the text. Uh, the most uh, uh, prominent words in the text which uh, describe the content of the text. And why do we need that? We need that in case if we have a huge amount, a huge amount of uh, documents and we would like to process, the, process them automatically. In terms of uh, do some summarization of these texts, uh, do some indexing, categorization, clustering, and uh, etc. Keyword extraction itself can be done on the level of each document or can be done on the level of the whole collection. I'm going also to show you some results on that how uh, the task is performed either way. So this is the big picture of keyword extraction. At, at the input, we have a set of documents. Uh, from different methods, we extract some candidates, some words which are potentially keywords and then we calculate properties of these words. Properties can be various uh, statistical properties, uh, occurrence position, or some uh, more advanced uh, properties like some semantic relatedness and things like that. And according to these properties, we actually obtain the rank of the keywords, uh, rank them, and then we cut the rank, uh, ranked list at top five, top 10, uh, depending how much keywords we would like to have. So uh, usually, traditionally, keyword extraction is done with some data mining, machine learning, and it's usually done in a supervised way, uh, where you need a set of documents and set of keywords, and you need to train the model uh, to classify new documents into these keywords. So, uh, but we are doing that the other way. Uh, we are trying to do this in an in unsupervised manner. Uh, so we are relying on something which is quite popular in the social network analysis, meaning that we are actually using network-based approach, which is unsupervised approach, and it's based on really simple principle that instead of dealing with the raw text, we are actually constructing the graph or network of, of, of that text in a very simple way. Words in the text are nodes in the network, and some relations between these words are actually represented with links in the network. As you can see in the upper part uh, on the slide, uh, on the left is some text, and on the right we have a network, one node, 
neighboring words connected with links, and on links we have weights. Weights represent uh, coherence frequency, or for you which are familiar with natural language processing, this is actually bigram frequency of the document represented as the weight of the node. But for others, don't worry, you can calculate that simply just by counting how many times things are occurring. So, uh, network-based is actually good. Why we started with that? We started with that because we hope that we can develop a method which is not language-dependent. Uh, what does that mean? That means that we, we, we would like to construct a method which will not use many linguistic knowledge or many semantic knowledge expressed in that language. Which meaning that we are aiming for something which can be done purely from some statistical properties. And uh, we are not the first one to do this in that uh, way. So uh, many methods uh, based on the network-based network networks have been proposed. Uh, some of them use the properties of the whole network on the sub-network or on the node level. And the most, uh, most uh, probably most famous one are uh, centrality measures like degree betweenness and closeness. So I'm going to spend another minute uh, with a slide with formulas. Uh, don't be afraid, it's really simple. Uh, so, uh, for each node, you can calculate the degree. Degree is simple. Degree is how many neighbors are on the ingoing or outgoing links. Uh, closeness, how close is this uh, node to other nodes in the network? Or between us, how many uh, paths between two, two nodes are going through that? Uh, what we... Uh, proposed is actually a selectivity measure for keyword extraction, which was uh, proposed for some other purposes for differentiation between artificial and proper text by Masucci and Rogers. And we actually saw some interesting properties of this measure which can be used for keyword extraction. I will uh, show you why we were, uh, we were motivated uh, in the next slide. So selectivity, uh, for uh, you who are more in complex networks analysis, actually is the uh, average strength of the node. Uh, besides selectivity, we also develop further and we also propose some general selectivity. I will not go into details, but general selectivity has one alpha parameter and with this alpha parameter, we can tune whether we are preferring or ranking higher nodes with high degree or with lower degree. And this actually can help us uh, with tuning the method to the data. So first, I, I will show you some results, how we actually started to develop method. And first, we used the Croatian data set. The creation data set was developed by our colleagues from Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computing in Zagreb. Uh, data set is called, uh, called HINA and uh, it contains Croatian news and was annotated by eight human experts. But when we saw the results for Croatian, the, the second question was, what about English? So the next thing that we started to investigate was how the same thing is uh, doing on the Wiki20 data set, which is kind of standard data set for keyword extraction. So this is how it started. And for each of these texts in two data sets, we constructed one network per each data, uh, per each text and one integral network for the whole text in the uh, data set. Uh, we use Python and Network X. So, and here are the first results, which can be maybe useful also if you are developing something like this. Uh, first, we compared how this simple measure of selectivity is comparing with degree betweenness and closeness on the both data set with top five and top 10 extraction task. And with pink, you see the results were, uh, in terms of F1 score, uh, where actually selectivity was doing better than closeness, betweenness, and degree. 
And that was the first indication that maybe there is something behind that. And we looked into the results, what we got from degree, betweenness, and so on. And it turns out that degree and betweenness are selecting something that is called stop words. For you uh, that are dealing with uh, text, you know that it's a list of uh, very frequent words which carry no semantic meaning, but uh, these top words are necessary for the syntax. So, degree and betweenness are filtering stop words, and selectivity was able to filter some nouns and uh, some uh, verbs. So we start to develop from this further and discovered that actually low selectivity filters something that is called close class words. These are usually conjunctions, prepositions, stop words, things like that. And high selectivity is filtering or a higher value of selectivity is assigned to open class words, meaning nouns, adjectives and verbs. Nouns, adjectives, and verbs are better keyword candidates that, than stop words. Why is that important? There are other techniques that you can filter uh, nouns and verbs uh, by using some part of speech tagger. But the idea was, actually, can we develop that only from uh, calculations from the raw text? So far, we are not developing, uh, introducing any other tool into the process. So, uh, selectivity actually turned out to really nice in this experiment, and then we developed the whole method about it. And in first step, uh, we detect which words or which nodes do have the highest value of selectivity, and then we propagate on the weights to predecessors to pairs and to triples of words, depending on the direction, ingoing or outgoing uh, detect uh, direction of links. And also, there is some possibility to maximize weights, meaning that if we are selecting for, oh, pardon, if we are selecting the second word, actually we are selecting the, high, uh, the highest bigram uh, for that word in, during that process. Uh, I don't know if you see it. Here I have an example. Actually, this is one network constructed from text and with light pink, which is not able to see because the light is also pink. Uh, I didn't check that. Uh, you see the light pink. Here is one. Here is one. Uh, these were original keywords uh, annotated by professional annotators. The pink arrows are the ones which were positive uh, detected by our method and also annotated by keywords, meaning that we have some good scores. But we also have some false positives. These are uh, represented with... Uh, actually, it was green, but here it looks blue. So, uh, these are false positives. Uh, uh, pink are true positive. So we do have some hits, we do have some missed, and we also do uh, detect something that was not originally annotated but humans. No surprise there. But one of the things that looked really interesting and that we are going to look further are these green uh, arrows. Uh, because sometimes on these green arrows, we have a name and surname meaning that besides keywords, maybe we are also extracting some proper names or name entities. So this is going to be part of our future research, but for now I cannot tell anything about it. So now to the results. We do measure a lot. And uh, on these two data set, you can see that uh, F1 score was not surprisingly big. For Croatian data set, about 25%, but it uh, was higher when we uh, extracted keywords from the whole uh, uh, integral network, meaning for the collection extraction task, actually we had around 34%. For English, the uh, situation started really low with 21%, but then with some tuning of weights, uh, we reached 34%. Not very much, 
but definitely above baseline. And we also compared our results with the human uh, annotation score, which I'm going to refer a little bit later. So not spectacularly good, but not bad at all, having in mind that we are not using any language dependent tool. So, the next thing that we uh, started to look into it was, uh, was uh, generalized selectivity, meaning that we introduced this measure in order to better adjust to the data set. First, it was development of the method, and we have to measure it objectively on the data set, but we kind of assumed that it, we could do better. So we combined this and uh, we generalized selectivity when we tune this alpha parameter, it turns out that uh, results can be achieved better on uh, either Croatian or uh, English data set. I will not go into details. Uh, it's all in the paper. Um, the next question was, okay, now we have developed a method which is a purely statistical method. It has a decent results. Uh, but we wanted our methods to be easily portable to other languages. And we searched for the very fair comparison, meaning that we search for the data set which is capable, which is relevant for keyword extraction in parallel languages. Multilingual data set for keyword extraction. And it turned out that this was really difficult to find. And we collaborated from colleagues here in Belgrade. And they said that they have something that can be useful uh, from their journal of mining and geology. And they uh, have actually parallel abstracts of Serbian and English uh, scientific writing uh, about mining and geology with annotated keywords. And it took us about one day to adjust this data set for the purposes, and if somebody wants to use it, it's available on our uh, website. So, why we wanted to do this? We really wanted to compare the method on the same size of text, on the same content of text, that uh, we are really doing some uh, honest comparison. Uh, so we ended up in data set which has, uh, for Serbian, uh, between uh, 34 and 260 words, and 44 and 286 words per each abstract. And also, Annot uh, six annotated keywords in average for Serbian and seven annotated keywords for, uh, in average for uh, English. So this looked okay. And then we used our method for extraction. And again, it turned out that method is doing better for Serbian than for English, which kind of asked for the conclusion that method is better for rich, morphologically rich languages which have a lot of flexions, uh, cases and tenses and so on. Uh, the second thing that uh, drew our attention was um, something that we called out of vocabulary. Actually, since the method is derived only from the input text and its structure, it is not capable of predicting keywords which were not present in the original text. And it turned out that about 20% of keywords in these data sets were uh, out of vocabulary, meaning they, uh, for keywords, people which annotated uh, keywords used words which were not really present in the text. And when we actually slightly modified the evaluation procedure by uh, disregarding out of vocabulary words. Here we have about 50% F1 score and 47% F1 score, F, uh, F1 score, which is quite decent result now. So, next. So far, so far what have I told you? I have told you that um, 
Selectivity-based keyword extraction is a keyword extraction method which uses a complex network. It's derived purely from the statistical properties of that network. It can be easily ported to a new language. Uh, for now, we have seen that it works better on morphologically rich languages, but we are not sure yet. Uh, it can be applied on shorter documents and with this uh, domain of geology and mining, we also tested that it's easily portable to a new domain uh, of content. So uh, for English Wikipedia, we had the worst results and the best results was for Serbian language, but these are not really totally comparable since these results are reported under different data sets. So, uh, from our assumptions, we uh, actually expected that method is doing better on longer text. It does better definitely on the whole collection than on isolated documents, but still from these last results of English and Serbian, we actually achieved quite good results also on the shorter text, and this is something to be looked uh, into further. Uh, the second thing is that we have to check these morphologically rich languages. Uh, further, we have to at least find another one which is a little bit more distant than Croatian and Serbian to test that. And uh, the next thing that we are doing, we are also trying to uh, test on the Italian, but it turned out that if you want to make a fair comparison, then you really need your own data set. So we are in the preparing of Italian, English and Croatian data set to see how Italian is working. So, method has a really uh, high recall and low precision, which meaning that you are receiving a larger data sets of po larger, larger sets of possible keyword uh, candidates that you really need. That can be a drawback or that can be advantage of the method, depending how you are using it. Uh, but uh, this is the property how the method was constructed. Sometimes the high recall means that you have a lot of candidates and then with some other method you can filter them better out. But you, uh, with this fourth step, you are actually reducing the dimensionality of the problem. Uh, the second uh, thing that we would like to investigate further whether it can be tuned to extract personal names and entities. I think this is going to be a hard one, but we do see a potential into this direction. And the third thing which I would uh, like to really emphasize that uh, keyword extraction is a highly subjective task. Here I have results of uh, how good are people among themselves or how people are agreeing what the real keywords in the text are. And it turned out that for Croatian, inter-annotator cons uh, consistency or agreement is about 40% and on Wikipedia uh, English Wiki20 data set is only about 30%. So when method is achieving 26 or 17 percent, it's not that low, low, low uh, below humans. So it's a hard task even for humans. So if you are uh, doing something like that, have in mind that even humans are not good doing good on this task. It's highly subjective. This is why, actually, we had the previous experience with the annotation of uh, corpora and things like that. And this is why one of the goals was how to develop a method without needed annotation. We needed annotations here only for the purposes of evaluation, not, not for development of the method. So, as I said, it does not require linguistic knowledge. Uh, we use pure frequency of co-occurrences of the words. Um, it can be done on the, sorry, on document or collection-oriented task. Pre-processing is not necessary. And uh, we are claiming that actually it is really easily portable because uh, it took us about one day to port it to a new language. So, uh, 
What else are we doing with uh, language complex network? We actually tried uh, to do some uh, genre differentiation, authorship attribution, how to differentiate between two authors who authored what, then some dimensionality reduction for the text classification task, uh, also some knowledge extraction on Wikipedia, some prediction of future contact of tweets by uh, method of link, production, uh, link prediction, and also some social network analysis. And for all that, I'm grateful to my Langnet uh, group, which consists mainly of my former uh, master students. And at the end, I would like to thank you for your uh, attention. And I think questions are already here. Indeed, they are. Thank you, Sandra, for your talk. And if you have any more questions, shoot. But let's now go into the first question, which is how do we solve issues of misspelled words? Ah, uh, uh, spelling is here not a problem because we just use the original version of the text. If it's misspelled, then we consider it as a new word. Otherwise, if you are dealing with the real NLP, NLP, then you have to do some normalization for misspelled words. It probably it would uh, improve the results, but we used good data sets. Maybe some misspelled words was in the uh, scientific abstract, but not uh, text extracted from Wikipedia or HINA, which is a national uh, agency. So uh, here we didn't uh, deal with misspelled words. Uh, going on a similar track, it's slightly different. Uh, how do you do with words that are English, but they're used in a non-English language? Uh, oh, usually you have to develop in NLP, you are somehow developing vocabulary for also non-native words. This is especially needed when you are dealing with speech. And with speech, then you need the, some different pronunciation uh, lexicons uh, for this kind of words. But here, there is really no need. If it's English word in Croatian text, it's treated like normal word. And if it has a high selectivity, it will appear as a hit or miss on the list. And it's up to you to see whether this is an okay word for that uh, task or not. So we are just treating any word on the input like uh, word, simply. And uh, we are omitting uh, interpunction, uh, inter inter meaning uh, semicolons, uh, full stops, things like that are omitted. These are cleaned. Okay, thank you for that detailed answer. Now, if we have, for instance, if we had an English text uh, translated into another language, could our extractor keywords be translated as well? And there would not be a need for further realizing. No, uh, uh, that is a really good question. Uh, no, you're extracting actually from the original language. So you are able to extract only what was already present in that. But if you have to translate that, then use some statistical machine translation, which is already trained. For this task, I think maybe even Google Translate can do it good because it's a short list of words. So a method is not doing any uh, statistical translation. Thank you. Uh, moving on, do you use TSNE in your analysis? SNE, social network analysis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, whole method is based on the same methodology except that for the social agents, meaning people in social contacts, we are actually modeling words and they are interactions. So beside this uh, pure coherence frequency, we also use some syntax dependencies, semantic similarity, uh, even phonetic similarity between words can be used. So you can use many different versions and for phonetic similarity 
this is not our research, but phonetic similarity it turns out that it can be similar to the mental representation of, uh, representation of mental lexicon in the human brain. So phonetic similarity, meaning the two words are different in their differing in one phoneme, then they are maybe close together, close together stored in our uh, brain. So different relations can, in language, be used for different things. Thank you. And um, moving on what to what might be the final question is, uh, how is the initial graph constructed in terms of weights and relations? Very simple. Two words are two nodes. If they are co-occurring, there is a link. And link uh, language always have a forward-going nature, which meaning that we are not speaking bad backwards. We are not writing backwards. Words are following each other, which uh, means that we also do have directions really native to go into one direction and not the opposite. And uh, if we see this one word after another many times, then we actually uh, add the counter on the weight plus one plus one, which means that if two words are co-occurring five times, then the weight on the link is five. Okay, thank you. That will be all for our Thank you, talk. great questions.